Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is the 8th here and we had a mixed day in Chicago with corn trading down 4 and 3 quarter cents. Soybeans up 7 and 3 quarters and wheat in Chicago trading up 4 cents on the day. Let's talk a little bit about corn here because it got off to a positive start trading up as high as 3.99 and 3 quarters before it met some resistance up around that whole $4 uh, price level. We traded back down to around 3.90 and a quarter to close off the day here. I wouldn't be surprised if that resistance up there uh, was just too strong. That big whole number, there's probably some uh, producers up there looking to sell uh, corn at that price. It looks as though uh, from talk uh, there was a little bit of more farmer sales uh, today as we did move up to that key price level. Uh, we'll have to see how that pans out going forward. Earlier today there was positive news uh, out of the, the fact that there was some DDG shipments that are going to China here. We'll see if they're able to pass through customs, but if they do that would be relatively positive here as many cargoes uh, were turned away in the earlier part of the year due to that unapproved strain of corn, MIR-162. Uh, it would seem that that would be kind of a policy shift if those DDGs are able to make it fully through customs without any sort of disruption. Earlier on today, we also got some export sales out. 136,000 metric tons here sold to Japan for 14.15 delivery uh, for corn. We also saw soybeans have a nice sale here, 130,000 metric tons to Spain for 14.15 delivery. Both of those are very positive. Now this morning, we also saw export inspections come out. Wheat came in meeting analyst expectations uh, with only about 269,000 metric tons here inspected for export. So that's not very positive. Uh, you know, it wasn't on the high side of the range, uh, kind of on the lower side of the range. And, and of course, combine that with last week's export sales, which really weren't all that positive either. You know, there's not a lot of really bullish news out here for wheat, but there are still concerns about Russia and their possible trade barriers down the line. Of course, corn here fell, uh, came in below analyst expectations. Expectations. They, they were only 532,000 metric tons inspected for export. Analysts were expecting anywhere between 650 and 800,000 metric tons. So that wasn't uh, very positive. Soybeans, on the other hand, beat analyst expectations. This could have been um, one of the other positive pieces of news here that allowed soybeans here to continue that uh, movement higher from that large uh, spike higher here on Friday. Uh, inspections were 2.2 million metric tons. Uh, analysts were expecting anywhere from 1.5 to 1.7. So that came out really beating analyst expectations. Very positive here. And of course, we're trading higher today. Now the question is, can we continue to move higher here? And of course, as we go toward Wednesday, we got to keep in mind that we do have a WASD report. Uh, expectations for that report are for soybeans uh, ending stocks to be revised lower. Uh, ending stocks here, uh, analysts the average of uh, analysts guess here about 427 million bushels here for carryout. That's revised from 450 uh, back in November. So keep that in mind here. Expectations are for ending stocks to be revised lower here for soybeans due to that strong demand that we've seen. Uh, a lot of that strong demand here is what has brought us up to these price levels. Do I think we can continue to move higher? I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow we get a little bit of a pullback um, as we move into Wednesday's report. Uh, so do keep in mind and, and, and make sure that this is a part of your strategy. Keep in mind that on Wednesday we do have that WASDE report. That is likely to define the direction here uh, for the remainder of the year. So pay close attention to that. Wheat expectations. We're expected to see higher ending stocks here for wheat at 654 million bushel carryout and corn 2.027 uh, billion bushels here. Uh, that would be an increase in ending stocks from that November report. So keep that in mind as you uh, as you trade here, uh, and especially as you're making your hedging decisions. I really think uh, Wednesday is uh, is going to be that day where it really uh, it really shifts the market. Uh, I still am relatively bearish here. Soybeans. I would suspect that uh, that what we're going to see here is some additional farm sales as prices move back up toward the highs. I think it's going to be. Very very difficult to, for us to get over the highs here. Weather down in South America really isn't providing
providing anything here that would allow us to build in any sort of a premium. And I'm concerned that if the, if the weather continues to be uh, good for that growing season down in South America, that's going to put more and more pressure on U.S. Uh, soybeans here. But of course, demand uh, continues to be strong and soy meal continues to be strong as well. Uh, talks in the soy meal market is that December soy meal demand is still exceptionally strong here. And it's almost a night and day difference between December soy meal demand and January or uh, supplies, December soy meal supply and January supply. So we'll have to see uh, here if this market can break, uh, if soybeans can break lower here. Uh, but other than that, that wraps up today's show. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about or any of the events that have gone on today or are expected to go on in the next uh, throughout this week, give us a call. The number is 877-472-4607. I look forward to hearing from you. And again, if you haven't done so, take a demo of our trading platform. See what it's like to have live quotes on your desk at home as well as on your mobile platform when you're out and about. So I look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you here tomorrow. 